most of the time, we, we were unlovably bad. Northwestern has a place in the Big Ten. I don't know if there's a word to describe how bad we were. Northwestern has a place in major college athletics. They were so bad that it was the only way that growing up on the East Coast, I'd even heard of Northwestern. It was college football without a compass. Naturally, it becomes slapstick, so everybody's looking for good high humor. The Northwestern Wildcats, who in a six-year period were the best team in the country at losing. I'm a huge Cubs fan, but it's kind of, during the early 80s, it was like that. It's like, no matter how hard they tried, they just couldn't seem to get it right. As you go to the game, you do your tailgater, you have your beverage, you go in there, you're kind of up, you're shaking your keys for kickoff, and then it begins. From 1976 until 1981, Northwestern pushed the limits of athletic futility. The Cats record, three wins, 62 losses, and a tie against Illinois. And the final score was? Zero, zero. You're aware of that? Zero, zero, yep. <laughs> and for a long time, that was our calling card. We tied Illinois zero, zero. The irony there is painful. It's painful. You're so bad that you're celebrating nothingness. NU alum Patrick Ryan is the CEO of the Chicago Olympic Committee. In fact, Ryan Field is named after him. I used to go out and speak a lot in, in business, and people would introduce me and then laugh about the Northwestern football team. And that was troubling. They don't laugh anymore. But I met my wife, when I, my future wife, my wife when I was at Northwestern, and when I first met her, we started talking and she asked me what I did. I told her I was a football coach. She said, where? I said, Northwestern. And she said, well, he must be telling the truth. He must be correct. Nobody would lie and say that if, if they weren't. So, and 25 years later, we're still married. Well, what was the problem? Why couldn't you guys win? Uh, <laughs> talent, lack, you know, lack of talent. On November 7th, 1981, Northwestern took losing to a whole new level. Facing Michigan State here at home, the Wildcats lost 61 to 14. It was their 29th consecutive loss, and it broke a Division I record. Losing was one thing. What happened next was entirely another. Well, we came down from the stands, the, the stands over here, and uh, everybody rushed to the, to the goalposts. They uh, stormed the field en masse, tore down the goalposts, chanting, we're the worst. We're the worst. <laughs> Rick Tallender covered the game that day as a writer for Sports Illustrated. He was joined by Tom Philp, then a writer for the Daily Northwestern, who has since won a Pulitzer Prize for the Sacramento Bee. You get the, these young, these, these freshmen or these Evanston High School guys that, that scamper up the post, and, and then you gotta kind of rock them back and forth. You gotta get the oscillation going. That's what snaps them. But for these Northwestern students who had been waiting their entire college lives to celebrate something, just tearing down a goalpost was simply not enough. The next thing you know, people started walking up uh, the stands with these goalposts on the east side, and they'd go all the way up to the top, and they'd throw them over the side. It was unbelievable. I, I mean, I don't, nobody could have anticipated that happening. Or where the students took them next. What better metaphor? is there to, to take the goalposts and bury them into Lake Michigan. It's like burying all that sadness and you know, burying the defeat. People used to lake people, you know, for their birthdays or they got pinned, you know, fraternity brothers. We'd, we'd roust guys in the morning or late in the evening, whatever, out of their bed and we'd take them out and throw them in the lake. Laking a human is one thing, laking a goalpost is a whole nother, a whole nother matter. And just like that, the term lake the posts became a part of the student body vocabulary, joining other words like winless, which the Wildcats were for the second year in a row, going 0-11, getting outscored 505-82. to 82. I figured at some point we'd win a game, but just didn't know when. September 25th, 1982, Northwestern hosted Northern Illinois and had its date with destiny. People came to that game with anticipation that this could finally be it. We're finally playing someone who looks like they might not be as good as we are. So hopes were high that day. 
And after 34 straight games, spanning four seasons, the Wildcats won a football game, beating Northern 31 to six, ending the longest losing streak in the history of Division I football. We're happy. I tell you, our players worked so hard, and, and we knew that time would come when that score would be a lot of points in Northwestern. Well, I saw grown men cry, and I, and I was one of them. It was very emotional. Students once again tore down the goalposts, but this time for a victory. And it was on to Lake Michigan for another baptism. But not before they made a special stop at the home of then school president Robert Strotz. The chanting was Strotz, 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 Strotz. Gotta, gotta show, the, show our prize goalpost of Strotz. And uh, he came out on a balcony. He was almost kind of like a, a, a dictator, like Mussolini. And then he says, can you cats growl? And we all go, rawr! And that was it. And that was, uh, then off we go to, to the lake. Over the next decade, the goalposts would return to the lake only a handful of times, like in 1991, after an upset win over Illinois. People were yelling, lake them, lake them, lake them. And as soon as the game was over, we ripped down those field goal posts and marched them into the lake. But today, the laking of the posts is a thing of the past, a tradition buried in myth and lore. But for those few who were there, they remember it well. And leaves them to wonder, could it happen again? How many teams can you know, take their goalposts on a victory and march them into Lake Michigan. That's pretty cool. I, so if they can figure out a way to do it, I'm all for it. Would you like to see that tradition of Lake in the Post come back in victory even? They can't get those posts down anymore. <laughs> it was an economic decision. They can't get them out of there. They're cemented in. They're cemented in. But Lake in the Posts will always be cemented in history. Chuck Arfine, Comcast Sportsman.